Hi and welcome back everyone, me Robert here and in this video I will show you how we built the OpenAPI Builder for WordPress. Are you wondering what's OpenAPI and why you actually would need it? Well, basically it's a specification that defines a standard programming language agnostic interface description for HTTP APIs. Basically you can create an OpenAPI document with the Swagger editor and display the API documentation with the Swagger UI. However, the Swagger editor is a tool that runs locally in your browser and it stores the OpenAPI document in your local storage. But we wanted to store the OpenAPI document on the server side in WordPress posts or WordPress options and instantly display the API documentation on our site. Therefore, we developed and just released this new product the Open API Builder for WordPress. So if that's also a requirement that you have, you can either buy this WordPress plugin at the link in the description below, or you can watch the video until the end and build it yourself. I will start with a live demo of this plugin, and then I will jump right into the source code and show you the essential parts of our implementation. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button at the notification bell below so you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. If you like this content and you think more people should be aware of it, then please smash that like button below for the YouTube algorithm. So you know what? Let's get to it! Alright, let's do a demo of the OpenAPI Builder for WordPress. I have set up a clean install of WordPress and I have enabled the OpenAPI Builder plugin yet. This created the OpenAPI Builder menu in the WordPress admin backend and three submenus, APIs, API Builder and Settings. On the API page, you can create and manage your APIs and the metadata of the APIs. On the API Builder page, you can edit the OpenAPI documents of your APIs. All changes you make here in the editor are immediately reflected on the API documentation here on the right hand side. For example, if we change the title to my first API, then you can see the results here on the API documentation. And at the top of this page, you can save the open API document in any WordPress post type and post. However, we don't do this right now because we want to create our own API post first. So let's go back to the APIs page. And here we create a new API by clicking on Add New. In this demo, I will create an API documentation for our very own Global Text as a Service REST API. Therefore, I enter Global Text as a Service here as a title. With the field persistence type, I can choose where I want to store this open API document. Basically, you can store it in the metadata of this post or in the WordPress options. Usually you would choose post meta here. However, if you want to use this plugin together with our other plugin, the multi-tenancy cloud server for WordPress, then you could also choose here option. In the editor layout field, we can choose between different layouts of the Swagger editor. And optionally, you could store here an URL to an external open API document as well. However, we do not enter anything here since we want to store the open API document in our WordPress. Once we are done, we click publish here on the right hand side. Now we can edit the open API document right here with the edit open API document button. But we also could go back to the APIs page and open it there from the APIs list. But let's click the edit open API document here right now. Now on the top of the page, you can see that the correct post type and post is already chosen here in this drop-down list. And before I save it, I make some changes to the Open API document. For this demo, I copy some lines of our Open API 
document of our Global Tax as a Service REST API here inside this editor. You can see that the right hand side adapted itself immediately. Now on the top of this page, I click Save Open API Document. And the green message here tells us that the plugin has stored the Open API document successfully in the post with the, the post meta of the post with the ID 16. Now we can switch back to the APIs page here. And here we can see that our API has been created. Here below the title of the API, we can edit the metadata of the API again, or we can edit the open API document in the editor again here with edit API, or we can simply view the API documentation here by clicking view API. So we start with clicking here on view API. This opens the API documentation of our previously created API. And here we could also try it out if we like. But we don't do this right now since this is beyond the scope of this video. So let's go back to the APIs page. And now let's edit the Open API document again by clicking the Edit API here. This loads the Open API document from the WordPress post and displays it here in the editor again. Now let's scroll down here on the right side of the API documentation and find the schemers. And here in the schema section, we find the customer schema. Let's say we want to add a sample data to the customer, to the first name and last name here. To do this, we scroll down on the editor in the editor window on the left side. And let's say we want to give the customer the name John Doe. And when we now click on the first name here and on the last name here, we can see that the example data has changed to John Doe. Now let's go back to the top of the page in the editor here and let's change the version number from 1.2.8 to 1.2.8.1 here. And now we save the document here by clicking on the Save Open Document button. Again, the message tells us that the document was stored successfully and we open the document again. Well, basically we open the metadata of this document again. And now we click Edit Open Document here again. This opens the Open API document and we can see that the version number has been stored successfully as well with all the other data that we've changed. Now switch back to the APIs page and open the Global Text as a Service API with View API to see the API documentation. And here we can see the same information as well. Now let's say you want to publish this API documentation on the front end of your WordPress site. For this purpose, the Open API Builder comes with a short code that you can enter in any WordPress post. Therefore, I go to Posts, Add New, and I create a new post. And we add a new block here and we enter short code. We choose short code here and we enter the short code as follows. First, we have the name of the short code followed by a parameter by which we want to identify the API. In our case, we choose here the post ID. We want to identify the API by its post ID and our API has the post ID number 16. We click here on publish on the right hand side, publish. And now we click on view post. 
This opens the open API documentation in the Swagger UI on a WordPress front end post. Now let's have a look how we built this WordPress plugin. I've opened Visual Studio Code, which is my favorite uh, source code editor. And here on the left side, you can see several classes, class files, which contain the source code. That's a lot of code and I cannot show you everything, but I will show you the most important parts. Basically, the APIs are created as a custom post type here. We register this post type with the WordPress init hook. In the register post type function. Then we add the meta boxes for the open API settings and the open API document editor. And here we get the settings of each API from the post and from the post meta with this function. And we extract the fields, persistence type, the editor layout, the open API document content and uh, the open API document URL. And here we output this field. And here in the meta box, we output the edit button which uh, opens the Swagger editor. We define multiple parameters here, including the open API post ID, the output type, the output page, the layout, the persistence type, and custom CSS if required. We pass these output parameters as argument to the output function in the class edit button. Now let's open this edit button class here. We add these parameters as hidden input fields to our output. And we extract it on the client side with JavaScript again. Once the button is clicked, we redirect to our custom admin page and pass the required parameters. This admin page we have created in the admin menu class here. Let's have a look at this admin menu class. Here we register our admin menu in the admin menu WordPress hook. Here we add the main menu page and the submenus. Here we add the API builder submenu and we register a callback function which gets executed whenever the link in the menu or the open API document edit button gets clicked. In this case, we open the process request by URL function in the open API endpoint class. And again, we pass the output parameters here. Now let's open the open API endpoint class. In this class, the function process request by URL function basically takes the query parameters and adds them to the output parameters. The query parameters basically contain the settings you have chosen in the API form. With these combined output parameters, we can now call the output function in the open API handler class. We open the open API handler class by clicking on the file here. And in its output function, we check the output type. When the output type raw has been passed, then we output the raw YAML or JSON content. But if the Swagger editor was uh, passed as output parameter, then we call the output function in the editor header class. 
This output function in the editor header class basically outputs the drop-down lists for the post types and the posts, but also the save button for the open API document. This class also contains the whole logic that is used to retrieve the content from the Swagger editor and to store it in a WordPress post. And with this class, we output the Swagger editor and we pass all required parameters. But now let's have a look in the editor header class, since this is a very important one. We open it by clicking on the file name. Here we register the Ajax functions that are called from the JavaScript source code whenever a drop-down list uh, is selected or when the open API document button, the save button is clicked. Here in the output function, we output the drop-down lists, but also the save button. And most importantly, we output the JavaScript function, the jQuery function, that listens on the save button click. And here it gets the Swagger editor content that is stored in the local storage. And it stores this editor content in our output parameters. And it sends this data via Ajax to our backend functions. Here in the backend function, we retrieve the post ID and the document content, the open API document content from the Swagger editor. And depending on the persistence type, we either save the content of the open API document in a WordPress option or in the metadata of a WordPress post. That's all for today. If you like this content, please click the like button and the subscribe button and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching.